This video is sponsored by EV, Australia's very own Tesla and electric vehicle sharing platform. Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel where I discuss Tesla, electric vehicles and renewable energy. If this is your first time to my channel, then hello and welcome. Take a moment to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay informed of any new content and it also helps my channel to grow as well. Today we are in our Tesla Model 3 Performance Stealth here in Sydney, Australia, road testing software update 2021.4.18.2. We are going to give Autopilot a test to check out the minor improvements and bug fixes. We are going to do that right after this. Hey everyone, welcome back. And as I said, we are checking out Autopilot on software update 2021.4.18.2. A bit of a mouthful again with these uh, firmware numbers. We're just gonna do an Autopilot test today. Sydney, Australia, so we don't have FSD beta. I do have the FSD package, however. So we'll be doing auto lane change testing as well, which you can only have on the FSD package. You know, there is a company called ev.com.au, which is a Tesla and electric vehicle sharing platform, which allows you to test Teslas and electric vehicles before you buy. Owners on this platform allow you to try their Teslas, take it out for a road trip for a few days, over a weekend, uh, try before you buy, beyond a short test drive from Tesla or another car manufacturer, or just use it as a gift for that special someone who's always into Teslas or electric vehicles, you know who I'm talking about right there. So check out ev.com.au forward slash Tesla Tom and use my coupon code Tesla Tom for $30 off your first rental with a growing fleet of Teslas and electric vehicles. There's sure to be an EV car for rent near you. And now for the rest of the video. Alrighty guys, we're gonna put autopilot on shortly. I have got the rear cameras on for you guys so you can see what's happening, but the rear camera and also the, the two repeater cameras as well. So to engage autopilot, right stalk always, double tap down. That noise, that famous noise is autopilot engaging. And the two blue lines there. You've got the tram track lines like that. It means it is on basic autopilot, which is traffic aware cruise control and auto steer. If you've got a single line, it's navigate on autopilot. For today's test, we're just gonna do the basic autopilot, which is included with all new Teslas currently in Australia and worldwide as well. So always hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. For new users, autopilot is still very much beta all the time. It's a mature, mature ring product, but uh, certainly not a feature complete at this stage. A bit of a sunrise test today. Uh, I've got a busy day at work, so uh, the only time I've got today is uh, to do it before I go to work. The uh, update dropped this morning, literally at about 4 or 5 a.m. here in Sydney. So you know what? Best time to do it is before work. I mean, I've got a bit of time before I head off. It's always good to show you guys um, how good it works as well. And to match the speed limit, just hold the right stalk down. You see how the number matched? Uh, 80, which is the posted speed sign right there. Uh, I'm yet to find another car uh, other than a Tesla that uh, drives autopilot or some sort of lane keeping uh, lane assist as well as uh, Tesla have done with their autopilot system. So, uh, no, basic autopilot is still very good. It does take a bit of practice as a new user. Uh, if you think of it as basically cruise control um, with, with a bit of auto steer, uh, then you'll be fine. Like, don't freak out. Uh, just know that it's basically cruise control. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, you'll be just fine. And to match the speed again, hold down the right stalk and it matches 60 kilometers an hour. And it does take a bit of practice, you know. Um, uh, you know, go, go for a quick drive before you head out, out on, on a long, long road trip. Sorry, early in the morning here trying to speak. Um, take a bit of practice before you head out on a long road trip. Do it a few times. 
uh, practice engaging it, practice um, you know keeping to the to the um, to the lane, and because um, I'm the first car uh, at the traffic light, I have to hang onto the accelerator twice because it's two traffic lights close together. And as you see, as we're heading closer to this traffic light, uh, it will stop for me uh, because there's a car ahead of me and also if I was the first car it will stop anyway. I'm not too sure whether the red light feature is um, included with the basic autopilot or it's also or it's just an FSD uh, package feature. Uh, those of you with basic autopilot let me know. Um, I'm not too sure but uh, because I've got the full package uh, we kind of get everything. So just a quick drive today, we're going to drive all the way to the end of this road and then I'll just spin around and then do the same thing backwards. Should be a good test. Oh, bit of a brake there, phantom brake. It does happen occasionally, so uh, those of you new to autopilot, just keep in mind uh, it does do that. It's very sensitive, so you know how if you're a normal manual driver or driving manually, if you have a car ahead of you that um, that is leaving the lane, uh, you have some leeway, like you know, as soon as the car is almost out you'd probably accelerate a little bit more to get ahead of them but with autopilot if the car ahead of you is leaving your lane uh, the car has to be basically all the way like we're literally talking 100% out of your lane out of the lane marking before the car um, for your car will actually take off again so just keep that in mind if you're wondering why it's not moving if a car ahead of you is leaving the lane and you saw before there was a flashing on the screen that indicates that um, the car, this car, wants you to acknowledge that you're still alive, basically, by waggling the steering wheel. So that's just a little thing to note. Might do an auto lane change test for you, uh, which I think personally is one of the best features of, um, of FSD package. Uh, lane change. So once this NRMA truck leaves, oh, no, see, I did that wrong. So, yeah, that's a good, good learning thing there. If you, if you like move the wheel too much, um, it will disengage. So it's, it's a, it's a bit of a gentle art, the lane change feature. To lane change, you just right indicate. And once the car is happy, okay, so that didn't quite work. That's fine. What we'll do is we'll do it all the way back. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Let's try now. There we go. There we go. Whoa. Whoa, that was... Yeah, sometimes it does that. I don't know why. Anyway, we'll disengage now and um, we will go back the other way. Give ourselves more room. Uh, it was definitely clear behind me, as you saw. Uh, there was no cars at all, so that's fine. We will come back and do another lane change test. So doing the return journey now, uh, as you saw, uh, that was a perfect example of why you should always pay attention on uh, autopilot. It is far from complete, even though it is a maturing product. Um, like with that lane change test, it does happen sometimes where it's a bit of a year and a year moment. Very uh, hesitant sometimes, but what we'll do is engage autopilot again. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, double tap at the right stalk. It doesn't have to be a full down tap, it's just like half tap, two double half taps. That will suffice. Right, let's see what happens this time, going back home. This way, back to the northern beaches. Right, that ding indicates there is a traffic light coming up, and because we're the first car, I've got to put the accelerator down. And we're good. Across these wide intersections, I always just be very wary. Let's see whether we can lane change this time. Yeah, it, another year and a year there. I had to sort of force it because otherwise I'd be stuck behind this lane. That's fine. We've got a bit of a um, bit of a better test coming up on the on the bridge up ahead with multi-lane traffic. So we'll see whether we can get a better lane change test up there. Sometimes with these bug fixes, uh, they fix something, but something else breaks. Uh, yeah, it just happens. It just happens, unfortunately, but um, sometimes lane change breaks. But I'm here to document reality. Reality, to let people know it's, uh, it's a maturing product. OK, 
Okay, so uh, we're just coming up to the Roseville Bridge. Um, and you can, by the way, um, sh tell the car how close you want to follow the car ahead. So, see that? I've got it on number one. You can cycle. Oop, sorry. You can. Let that. Okay, so I'll let that voice command thing go. Uh, you can cycle how close you want to follow. I'm going to go back to number one. And. Um, once we get to the 80 kilometers an hour area, I will. So we go, see 80 there ahead of me, so I will scroll up. We go 80 kilometers an hour. Yeah, sometimes it reads the road up ahead in this area here, I know from uh, experience. So I just put my foot down a little bit and over road that. So a bit of local knowledge is helpful. Okay, so cars tend to go very quickly on this bridge past the speed limit, so I will just keep my nerve try to, once this car behind me overtakes me, I will try to change lanes to the right for you. Uh, here we go. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Can we get a good lane change? Yep, that worked. Okay. So I find that on faster speeds, um, lane change is not too bad. And uh, obviously there was a barrier on my right, but I was very, um, very careful with that just holding onto the wheel there, but that, that lane change was pretty smooth in the end, despite the uh, barrier, and then we'll see whether we can change back to the left on a curve, give it a really good test here, yeah, that's not bad, and it even slowed down for me, knowing that that Celica was there on the left, so that's very cool, and then sped up again to pass it, hey, that's pretty cool, and then if this car is indicating the right to get in my lane, I can switch to this lane, Okay, so yeah, I don't know. Don't know why uh, before I didn't want to lane change uh, on that double lane. Maybe because it was um, an undivided road, saw cars coming towards me. Was a bit hesitant perhaps, but uh, it seemed okay on this divided stretch with the concrete barrier. Anyway, nevertheless, I think overall it probably did okay except for that lane change at the beginning. But otherwise, yeah, pretty happy with this test. Alrighty guys, uh, if you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up, I really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe if you've not done so already yet. And uh, leave a comment below if you've received this update, if you've noticed any improvements, any bug fixes, uh, any new bugs. Uh, love to hear from you, leave a comment below. Have a great day everyone. I'll see you at the next video. Happy charging.